When it comes to medium-sized lizards, which is better? Is it a blue tongue skink or is it a bearded dragon? Today, let's go over the pros and cons of each and I'll let you know which one might be best for you. My name's Adam, this is Erwin, this is Diamond. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Blue-tongued skinks are medium terrestrial, heavy-bodied or medium-sized bodied lizards from either Australia or Indonesia. Bearded dragons are medium-sized, kind of medium-bodied, semi-arboreal lizards, and they all come from Australia. The first thing you need to know is the size, and obviously we've got two here to compare, and these are two full-grown males. Or I think Irwin's a male, it's hard to tell with blue-tongued skinks, but Diamond here, he's a little bit on the small end, but he is an adult-sized bearded dragon. So just for reference, here are the size. Now, it's kind of not fair because Erwin is a unit. This is one of the biggest blue tongue skinks I have ever seen. This is a big chunky monkey. He's about uh, 32 inches. In general, you're gonna find them between 18 and 30 inches. So he's much larger or a few inches larger than what you'd normally find. Where with a bearded dragon, those guys are gonna be between 18 and 24 inches on average. Sometimes you get smaller or larger, just like any animal, right? Same thing with humans. Sometimes you get really big ones, and sometimes you get really small ones. But in general, they're very similar in size. So if we're doing a head-to-head, -head, how do I pick a winner here? I always kind of do this with size. Do you want something that's a medium, heavy, chunky guy? Or do you want something that's a little bit more nimble? I mean, they're kind of same size, one a piece. Category number two is enclosure size. Now you need to know what size your lizard's gonna get if you get one, but also how big of a footprint in your home is it going to take? And they're both pretty similar to be honest. And a lot of people are gonna say for a blue tongue or a bearded dragon that 75 gallons is enough. I don't agree. Some people do it. I'm sure your lizards are happy. I just personally think that it's too small. I always suggest 120 gallons for both in my opinion, or around that size, that floor print. The thing is, bearded dragons are semi-arboreal, so they're gonna need some space in the trees. This guy isn't going anywhere, not above maybe a log that he climbs over, something like that. So you're not gonna have to worry about too much space up in the trees or ledges or branches or things like that, climbing obstacles for Irwin. For diamond, yeah, you do. So I would suggest for bearded dragons, something like four by two by two. Some people I know keep them in six by two by two or bigger than that even. It's up to you, but in my opinion, minimum size that is kind of above industry standard and gonna make you look like a really great keeper, four by two by two. With Irwin, I would say the same, but you could even get away with an inch and a half rather than two inches tall because he doesn't need the height. And of course also, he doesn't need room for a bulb. And we're gonna to get to that in a second. There's also more options with blue tongue skinks and what you can put them in, which we're gonna to get to in just a little bit with heat and humidity here. So I have to give this one to blue tongue skinks, whether it's an Indonesian or an Australian. I think that there's just more options, uh, although they're very close. I'm gonna give it to the blue tongue skink. So two for the blue tongue skink and one for the bearded dragon. Category number three, we're gonna roll three things into one, heat, humidity, and lighting. And this is really important. Obviously, ectotherms need some sort of heat in order to function. They can't produce their own body heat like you and I can. And both of these, they fit into that boat. They're both reptiles, right? So the nice thing is they're pretty similar again, but bearded dragons need a little bit hotter of a hot spot, and they definitely need a basking bulb. And we're gonna get to that with the lighting. With Irwin, our blue tongue skink, you can use a radiant heat panel. That's what I do with Irwin. Both, in my opinion, you need UVB bulb. Some people keep their blue tongues without them, and they do just fine, but with a bearded dragon, they will get metabolic bone disease, and they will die a very slow and horrible death if you don't give it to them. So I, I know I'm gonna get these comments, well, mine free roams and never gets UVB and it's fine. It's not fine. I promise you it's not fine. You just haven't noticed yet. In blue tongues, it's very different. This is where we're gonna really get into the difference between Indonesian and, and Australians. And if you're looking for heat and humidity, like right to the T, it should be a basking spot, it should be between 95 and 105 for bearded dragons, for example. Top left corner here, there's a care guide there for bearded dragons, and we'll get to blue tongue skinks in a bit. But blue tongues generally are a little bit cooler, kept a little bit cooler than bearded dragons, or they can tolerate cooler temperatures. It depends if they're a northern blue tongue skink, which is from Australia, or an Indonesian, like Irwin is here. But in general, just in generalities here, uh, blue tongues can take a little bit cooler temperatures, and bearded dragons need hotter basking temperatures, for sure. And they don't tolerate cool as well 
as blue tongues. And humidity is the one where it's gonna be really tough to decide because I mean, bearded dragon is a bearded dragon for the most part. Centralians is what we keep in captivity mostly. And they need a low humidity level. We're talking like 30%, somewhere around there, a little bit higher, a little bit lower. Again, in the care guide, I give a, a breakdown of it. But with blue tongues, it depends. If it's an Australian blue tongue, Northerns, they need a lower humidity level as well, like 40%, very similar to a bearded dragon, in fact. But if you have an Indonesian, like this guy, they need high humidity levels. We're talking 70%. And if you look at his enclosure, it's all fogged up, his PVC. And that's what I was getting at with the enclosures. Which one is easier? Because with blue tongues, you have more options, especially with an Indonesian. With an Indonesian, you can use just a PVC and make a damp substrate and you know have the humidity go as crazy as you want. With bearded dragons, you want some form of mesh or some form uh, a way for air to circulate a lot better than you'd need with uh, an Indonesian blue tongue skink. And also because I use a radiant heat panel, which is, I don't know, two or three inches tall with Irwin and UVB bulbs are usually, if you, if you set them up right, four inches or so, you can get away with a smaller enclosure or a shorter enclosure for a blue tongue. With a bearded dragon, you need a basking bulb. You just do, you definitely need a basking bulb. And that's gonna be, you know, six or seven inches it's gonna take. So I just think it's a lot easier. In terms of the UVB with a blue tongue, you don't need a 10.0 with a bearded dragon. Some people use 12.0s. I know that Arcadia makes those. Or a 10.0, there's a UVB bulb in the description below an affiliate link for Amazon and make a couple cents. If you choose to buy one, much appreciated. But either way, Give your bearded dragon and your blue tongue, give them both UVB light, make sure the temperatures are right. And I just think that blue tongues are a little bit easier. So we're gonna give it to blue tongues again, three to one for the blue tongue skink. Our next category is gonna be diet. And with these guys, it's a, a kind of a big difference. Both of them are omnivores technically, right? Because our bearded dragon here, he's going to eat vegetables, he's gonna eat salads, and he's also gonna eat insects. So he's gonna eat both. And as they grow up, they have a different percentage that they need. Baby bearded dragons need a lot more insects than their adult counterparts. They're gonna need probably something like 70% insects, whereas they grow up, they can only need, you know, 30 to 50% insects, depending. And the rest would be salad, things like vegetables, obviously, leafy greens. So things like not spinach or kale, those are not really great options, uh, but things like endive or Swiss chard or mustard green or collard green, again, check the care guide. And blue tongue skinks, who now you can see the care guide up in the corner here. These guys are gonna eat also vegetable vegetables. They're gonna eat, you know, greens and things like that, just like a bearded dragon. And they're gonna also eat insects, but they can also eat things like premium dog food and snails and uh, Bluey Buffet, which is a product that you can see right here, and which is actually what we've got Irwin on. He's eating a lot of that right now. He loves it. They will basically eat anything. You can feed them, you know, cooked turkey, unseasoned, of course, eggs, he eats quail eggs all the time. So it's just, there's a little bit more of an option in my opinion. So with a blue tongue skink, you've got more variety in my opinion. It's more fun to feed a blue tongue skink and why I'm not holding them while well, we're getting to handling in a second. So I just think that there's more options. There's more that you can feed them. It's easier to find. And especially because bearded dragons are gonna need to eat things like crickets and dubia roaches. Things you have to go out and buy every week or you have to breed at home or keep at home at least. And keeping insects alive is not my forte for sure. And then you gotta feed them the vegetables as well. Where with a blue tongue skink, if you know it's a holiday, ah crap, I gotta feed today. Well, I got a thing of snails, canned snails, and I've also got some bluey buffet and some premium dog food. You're good for the day. With you can't really do that with bearded dragons. So it's a little bit easier in my opinion. Anyway, we'll give them the point. Now, why am I holding diamond and why is Irwin away? Well, behavior is our next category. And uh, well, I just, I'll save you some time. Bearded dragons win, for sure. Blue tongue skinks normally are pretty good and I can hold Irwin uh, most of the time without a problem at all. Irwin's just a little bit more squirmy. Diamond, like he's doing this. Irwin would never do this. And of course, because blue tongue skinks, their tails can pop off. You just gotta be careful when you hold them. Their claws are extremely sharp. I don't know if you can see this, but like I'm literally bleeding. So it's, it just depends. And this is not something to be afraid of by any means. If you acclimate your, your blue tongue skink, you should be absolutely fine. But bearded dragons are gonna be a lot easier most of the time. And I know I'm gonna get some comments. My blue tongue is fine and my bearded dragon is the devil. I, I get it, but it's just in general, in my experience with the many I've ever held and the first reptiles I've ever had were bearded dragons, I've never had a bad experience, ever. Blue tongue skinks can be hissy a lot of the times, you know, they, out of the egg, 
out of the egg, they're live bearers. What am I talking about? Right when they're babies, it takes some work to acclimate them. So with the bearded dragon, it's just easier. So we're gonna give this one to the bearded dragon. We're now at two to four and we've got a category left. I'm gonna give two points for this category so that we can maybe tie it up. Let's find out. Price, availability, and morph. Because this doesn't matter to you at all. This whole video is a waste of your time if you're thinking, oh, I want one, but you can't find one or can't afford one. Great news. You can probably afford and definitely find both. The nice thing is with Bearded Dragons is they're everywhere. Every pet store has one. I don't suggest big box pet stores. Support a local breeder or local pet uh, reptile shop. But your reptile shop will have one, likely. Your Whoever it is that you buy from at your expos, they'll definitely have one too, in my opinion, or in my experience. I've always seen them there. So it's going to be easier to find these guys. And they're cheaper as well. Blue Tongues, they're... There's more breeding projects and they're becoming more popular, but they're more expensive. Something like, you know, 300 bucks or even more for a, a Northern. Northerns are generally, I don't know, like 500 bucks in my area anyway. So it just depends. Bearded Dragons, you can get them for 100 bucks all day long. No problem or less, a lot of the times even less. The first one I ever got was free and the second one was free also. So it just depends. People give them away all the time. Check your local rescues. I always recommend that. I just don't talk about it a lot because we don't really have reptile rescues around here. You put them on Kijiji, or which is the Canadian version of Craigslist, and reptiles, they're gone pretty quick. But if you in your area, you have somewhere that rescues reptiles, check there first. You'll probably find a bearded dragon. So for sure, bearded dragons, price and availability all the way. But what about when it comes to morph? Well, no change, actually. Because if you live in Australia, it's different. You can get these crazy cool uh, morphs of northern blue tongue skinks, but... Now, Australia doesn't import their animals, or sorry, export their animals anymore. I don't know if you knew this. I think it was 1976. They stopped exporting their animals, so we can't get any. And whatever we had pre-ban of exportation is what we have. So all these new designer morphs that you see in Australia, we can't get legally anyway. But with uh, Bearded Dragons, there's lots. You can find leatherbacks. You can find super red ones. You can find ones that are nearly black. You can find white ones. There's all sorts of different varieties and, and morphs that you can choose from. So... I know I said I was going to give two points for this category to tie it up, but I hate ties. So Blue Tongue Sinks are going to win this one three to four. What do you think? Did I get it right? Would you have changed something? What do you prefer? Have you had one? Have you had the other? Have you had both? And I got this idea out of the comment section below. Leave your idea down there. I take every idea out of the comment section. A super special thank you to the Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much. For everything that you do, you get to watch videos early, extra content, you know about stuff that's going on. We just, you know, we moved into this new house, so this is a temporary background. We're setting up the studio. You guys know a little bit about that. We've got a ball python clutch that's about to hatch. That's a Patreon-only thing. So for as little as a dollar a month, you can get all that, plus discounts on sweet merch like this. And I've plugged everything now. Uh, hit subscribe. See you on Monday. No, Thursday. I'll see you on Thursday.